Get on board, children, children, get on board. Hollis Watkins sings a song popular during the 1960s. Let's fight for human rights. Its message was intended to inspire and recruit young people to join the civil rights movement. Watkins and countless others were known as the movement's foot soldiers. They worked quietly behind the scenes to fight segregation and other injustices African Americans faced. The conditions were not good for us. A change needed to be made, a change for the better needed to come about. The grade they thought she was in, she wasn't there. So now we are on a mission now. In Alabama, Shirley Gavin Floyd heads an organization that helps tell the stories and unsolved mysteries of decades ago. She says the foot soldiers of the civil rights movement made great sacrifices. They were the, on the battlefield. They were the ones who were beaten down. They were the ones who was washed down the street. They were the ones who was spat upon. Reverend Willie Blue worked behind the scenes too, running what were called freedom schools to educate civil rights workers on registering blacks to vote in the South. And freedom school was very instrumental in that, in teaching uh, uh, our young people that in turn went out, knocked on doors, talked to people, convinced them uh, to get registered to vote. Tougaloo College was given the name as the cradle of the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s. Civil rights leaders from across the country would come here to Woodworth Chapel to speak and fire up the demonstrators to fight for equal rights. We must let the world know that it is necessary to protest this threefold evil. Floyd remembers how effective the mass meetings were in raising hopes and morale. And in this meeting, motivate them through singing and praying and talking and deliberations, at the same time telling them the importance of them participating in this movement to break down the barriers of segregation and discrimination. In one march in Mississippi, Lewis Tucker was among those attacked by police dogs. They turned the dogs loose on us, and uh, we, defended, we defended the area, our territory, with uh, whatever we could find at the time, which was milk balls. That's what we chased the dogs off with, and we continued our, on our way. Dick and Sharon Miles were among the white people who took part in the movement, helping to register blacks to vote in 1963. They took great risk in participating. There was potential violence, and there were certainly threats, uh, and people objected to the work that we were doing. I think a lot of um, people in the North, both black and white, decided, as Sharon and I had decided, that we really should get involved, that, that people, young people especially, should get involved. This was a, uh, a watershed moment in American history. This is May 1963. Attorney Richard Cohen is with the Southern Poverty Law Center, a renowned civil rights organization. He says many of the unsung heroes should be praised for their efforts. History sometimes only remembers a few people, and so I think when we look back, we don't we don't sometimes recognize the fullness and the and the incredible number of people who made um, progress possible. We were never sharecropper, but we were poor. Tyrone Davis was afraid to take part in civil rights demonstrations until a march from Memphis to Jackson against fear in 1966. When the march ended, for me, the fear ended. I wasn't no longer afraid. I had certain right, the same right as a human being to do what anyone else could do. Be polite. Don't be combative. Clifton Casey was 17 years old when he was arrested and spent nine days in jail for marching in a demonstration. That was just a little, one little person, but, but, the, but the group as a whole, what we did, and I look back now and I think, you know, yes, you know, it, it, it was super. Some historians say the unsung hero's vigilance and action succeeded in ending many forms of racial injustice. Chris Simpkins, VOA News, Jackson, Mississippi.